what could be a quality or the qualities that all types of love have in common. Because my feeling is that there's actually no such thing as love. Love is a term for a collection of qualities. It's an umbrella term for a variety of qualities. And then when all those qualities come together, you have what we would call love. Whether it be for your husband or your wife, your country, etc. So I will define love like this. Love is a feeling of warmth and caring towards another or an object, an interest in and a desire for intimacy with that thing or person. So a feeling, warmth, caring, interest in, desire for intimacy with. So, all types of love, there's a sort of a warmness. You smile when you see that person, or thing, or animal. Care. You are concerned about its or their welfare. So, for example, when you love your country, you care about how your country is perceived by others. When your country is criticized or something, you feel a little bit insulted or hurt. When you see pictures of the country, the mountains, the waterfalls or something, it makes you feel good. Same with people. An interest in, that's important. When you love something or somebody, you're very, very interested in it. You want to know all about it, you want to explore it, you want to see all the different aspects and angles of it. Some people say, I love my hobby. Oh. And they really do. Sometimes they know more about it, if they love that particular subject, than the experts do. They have a, a passion for it. And a desire for intimacy. By that I mean a desire for closeness. So in the case of a man and a woman, that would take the form of sex. In the case of your friend or your brother or your sister, you might hug them, put your arm over their shoulder. So when I'm talking about intimacy, I'm not just talking about sexual intimacy. And emotional intimacy too. If you have a really good friend, you might tell him or her things that you don't tell anybody else. And when they confide in you, you really like it because it shows trust, closeness. We like to be intimate and we like others to have an intimacy with us. It sort of creates a bond. So this is how I will define all types of love. Love is a feeling of warmth and caring towards another, an interest in them, and a desire for intimacy with them, or it. Now, it seems that this immediately puts love at odds with dharma. Because the ultimate goal of Buddhism is to be completely free in every sense, but particularly free from desire and want. And when we're talking about love, we often associate that as not just intimacy, but a very strong desire for that intimacy. We associate conjugal love. What's conjugal love? Between what? Oh, I see. She's quite clever, huh? Did you? I bet nobody else knew that. However, the 
Buddha, a consummate teacher, was well aware. In fact, he called his teaching, interestingly, he called it a path, marga. In fact, he called it the Noble Eightfold Path. And on another occasion, he called it the Middle Way. A way a highway or a byway. So he used these two words for his teaching as a path. Now one thing about a path is that it goes from here to there. In other words, it has a starting point, a middle and an end. In other words, what we have and what we do and what we feel now might change gradually towards the middle, and it might become quite different towards the end. Therefore, Buddhism allows for the expression of all the different types of love, including the highest type of love, which is free from desire and the desire to have, etc., what we would call metta. But that doesn't mean the other types of love are not or should not be important too. They have their place also. In fact, I have a theory. It's called the Venerable Dhammika theory. 